Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. These words encapsulate the spirit of Special Tactics Airmen. We volunteer to be first there, that others may live. Special Tactics has its roots in the Army Air Corps of World War II. After several airborne attempts that scattered paratroopers for miles in Sicily, the Allied officers employed specialized paratroopers called Pathfinders to jump in with navigation aids such as radar beacons and panels to guide the paratroopers to their target. Pararescue similarly had its roots in World War II when 21 persons bailed out of a C-46 over an uncharted jungle near the China-Burma border. A flight surgeon and two medical corpsmen volunteered to parachute into the inaccessible and remote crash site and for a month cared for the injured personnel with the help of the natives. One grateful survivor wrote of his rescuers, Gallant is a precious word. They deserve it. When the Air Force became its own service following World War II, Bull Benini, a jump master and pathfinder, was recruited to become the very first combat controller in the Air Force. While in the Army, Benini fought at Luzon in the Philippines, where he was captured. He endured the Bataan Death March and spent three years as a POW in a Japanese labor camp. He recalled that in the early days of combat control, he had a relatively untrained team and had to borrow equipment from the Army. His leadership helped lay the foundation for future generations. During the Cold War, combat controllers and pararescuemen assigned to separate units and across various commands executed global access, precision strike, and personal recovery operations, most notably in Vietnam. In the late 70s, then Captain John Carney assembled a small ad hoc team of combat controllers known as Brand X, who worked side by side with the nation's elite counterterrorism units while conducting clandestine operations. After Operation Eagle Claw, the failed hostage rescue attempt in the heart of Iran, Special Tactics regrouped for future operations along with the rest of the fledgling Special Operations community. Since then, Special Tactics forces have been involved in every major Special Operations mission. On 1 October 1987, the Air Force activated the 1720th Special Tactics Group, later redesignated as the 720th Special Tactics Group. Lieutenant Colonel Carney became the group's first commander and brought combat control and pararescue under the same organizational umbrella. Eventually, Tactical Air Control Party and Special Reconnaissance were brought into the fold under one banner galvanizing Air Force Special Operations Command's ground capability. Special Tactics was there in Panama for Operation Just Cause. We were there in Iraq for Desert Storm, and we were there in Somalia for Operation Restore Hope. As the force evolved in the late 80s and early 90s, the need for specialized combat mission support became apparent. Today, we have a multitude of specialties that provide a spectrum of combat mission capability. AFE, combat arms, intelligence, radio, vehicle maintenance, dive, IDMT, doctors, chaplains, strength coaches, and many others that are integral to mission accomplishment. These teammates enabled a maturation of the community's operational capability just as special operations became the leaders of the nation's fight against violent extremist organizations in the wake of 9-11. Throughout two decades of operations in Afghanistan and Iraq, Special Tactics executed the full spectrum of its access, strike, and recovery missions. We were among the first forces in country for both conflicts, effecting joint forcible entry and opening vital airheads such as Rhino, Kandahar, and Baghdad International. From Special Tactics operators' decisive integration of precision fires as part of a joint advise-assist mission supporting the Northern Alliance eventual liberation of the entirety of the Northern Afghanistan to the integration of fires and ISR to facilitate the capture of Saddam Hussein and the recovery of Private Jessica Lynch in Iraq, to the multitude of personal recovery missions that saved the lives of hundreds of Allied personnel highlighted by the gallant actions of ST personnel, including Master Sergeant John Chapman and Senior Airman Jason Cunningham during the Battle of Takagar. 
special tactics played a key role. Most recently, we were there as an integral part of the force that executed the joint tactical exfiltration from Bagram, Afghanistan in the spring of 2021, as well as later that year for the evacuation of 122,000 civilian and military personnel from Hamid Karzai International Airport. Special Tactics Forces from the 24SAL continued to play a critical role in the DOD's ability to respond to crisis, including numerous humanitarian assistance operations from across the globe, including responses to Hurricanes Katrina, Ivan, and Michael. Perhaps most notably, teams from three Special Tactics Squadrons supported Operation Unified Response in 2010 arriving just 30 hours following the 7.0 magnitude earthquake in Haiti to lead the largest single runway operation in history. In a 12-day period, the team oversaw more than 4,000 takeoffs and landings, an average of one every five minutes from a card table in the infield of the runway with man-packable radios. As the senior enlisted leader for the deployment, Chief Master Sergeant Antonio D. Travis was recognized as one of Time Magazine's 100 most influential people in the world that year. During the first decade following 9-11, AFSOC recognized Special Tactics as an agile, problem-solving organization by standing up the 24th Special Operations Wing on 12 June 2012, under then Colonel Gwen Armfield. Additionally, AFSOC entrusted the wing with maturing Special Operations Surgical Teams, command of the rapid bear base capability known as D-Cell, and the establishment of U.S.-based Theater Air Operations Squadron. Moving forward, we'll remain part of the nation's first line of defense against terrorism and as part of a crisis response force that can quickly react to events around the globe. As peer and pacing threats have replaced violent extremists as our nation's biggest challenge, we've shifted effort to address those threats using the same tenacity and bias for action that made us successful during the global war on terror to compete in today's gray zone environment. We have developed into a force that is equally as effective operating in these politically sensitive environments as we are on the battlefield. We will continue to mature our operational capabilities to protect America against its enemies. As our new SOCOM commander says, we were made for this era. First there, that others may live.